there's a lot of wonder in the world. And I, and I, I, uh, I tweeted and, and wrote about Facebook on the story that I read, which, which I found amazing. And that is that uh, for the first time in the U.S., uh, they have managed to edit the human genome in an embryo. So they've managed to go into an embryo and change its DNAs. And as far as they can tell, without, uh, without uh, polluting the rest of the DNA. So this had been done in China several times, but it had failed in a sense that, yes, they managed to change the one gene that they were targeting, but at the same time, they changed other genes that they didn't want to. And this is for the first time, supposedly, if the study is right and if the story is right, this is the first time where they've used this uh, CRISPR, which is this new technology for gene editing, uh, where they can they have targeted a specific gene, a gene that's defective, that causes birth defects, and they've managed to change it. So that theoretically, if this embryo was, was, was uh, placed in the womb of a woman and carried to term, it would not have the genetic defect that it was supposed to have. And they did this on uh, over 100 Embryo. So they took, uh, they took uh, eggs and they took sperm from males who had this genetic issue and they impregnated the eggs. And at the point of making the egg pregnant, in a sense, of the, that they inserted this thing, I don't understand the science enough to tell you what this thing is, to change the genes. It's called this CRISPR, this CRISPR is this technology. And it's it's unbelievable, right? So you could basically take genetic diseases out there, and, and I would argue that, and many people have argued that many of the diseases we have today are basically genetic. And you can manipulate the genes at the level of the embryo when it, before it first divides so that every cell from then on has the correct gene. I think this is amazing. Now, I know. All of you out there are scared. You know, what if bad guys get a hold of this technology? They're going to make a whole race of blue-eyed, blonde Hitler youth and so on and so forth. But yeah, and yet they're dangerous. Every technology can be used for evil and is dangerous. But wow, I just love it when the human mind invents new ways to control nature. It is so cool. And there's so many good things that can be done here. Think about all the wonderful, wonderful things about curing diseases that can be done here. Uh, so this is a huge advancement in technology and medicine and science. And it's, it's just terrific to see. And it's terrific um, that, you know, we get to live and, and see this through. And I view it, yes, there's danger. But the benefits far, far outweigh the dangers of such stuff. It's the same with artificial intelligence and robots that people are so afraid of. Even, even Elon Musk. The robots are going to take over the world. Cool down, man. The benefits of these things far outweigh the risks and the dangers of something bad happening. Yeah, they could happen. They could happen. But so so could nuclear technology be used for a bomb. Yeah, it was used for a bomb. And, 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 but for the most part, the good guys have controlled the use of that bomb. And it hasn't been used too badly, you know, in, in any bad way yet. Uh, every technology can be used for evil. But I believe in human beings. I believe in our ability to create great things and do great things with technology and improve life on this planet. When we get back, I want to talk about improving life on the planet. And where we are is life as horrible as so many people on left and right would like us to believe. You're listening to your Ron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, so we're back. And unfortunately, we only have like five and a half minutes or so uh, to talk about some uh, positive things uh, other than the gene splicing technology. But we're going to have to do a whole show about this. Because there is now a new movement, if you will, among certain intellectuals called the New Optimists. I like it. I, I, I think that's cool, right? The New Optimists. Um, it's led by, by uh, mostly Europeans, as many of these intellectual movements tend to be, uh, primarily by Jan Norberg uh, from Sweden, uh, Matt Ridley from the UK, and Steven Pinker. Steven Pinker might be an American or a Brit. I'm not sure. Anyway, important intellectuals in our time. And the basic, the basic idea that uh, the new optimists are advocating for is that we underreport and don't seem to value 
all the good news that is happening all around us all the time. For example, you know, just a few things, right? Child mortality has roughly gone down in by half since 1990. Since 1990, it's gone down by half. An additional 300,000 more people gain access to electricity every single day. The number of people in extreme poverty fell by 137,000 people since yesterday. So basically every day, right? So there is massive good stuff, food, sanitation, life expectancy, poverty, violence. We'll get to violence in a minute. The state of the environment, how clean the air and the water we consume is. Literacy, even freedom. Equality of before the law and conditions of childhood have all globally improved dramatically and are improving every single day. Right now, as we speak, they're getting better. As recently as 1882, only 2% of homes in New York had running water. In 1900, World, uh, worldwide life expectancy was a paltry 31 years. That's unbelievable, right? Worldwide life expectancy today, worldwide is 71 from 31, right? So in terms of violence, violence is interesting. According to Steven Pinker's book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, which I strongly recommend, particularly the first half of it, um, we are living in the least violent period in human history with ISIS, with what's going on in Syria, with the massacres and wars in, you know, Africa, with all the violence in Chicago, with all the violence all over the U.S. The, you know, that Donald Trump has convinced us is, you know, going through the roof, right? With all of the horrible stuff going on in the world. If you look at rates of death in wars, murder, rape, even bully, all down, all in steep decline. We live, from this perspective, in the best era, the best period in human history. Now, there are other things that are not so good, and another time we can talk about those, and, and they're very important. But from a material perspective, from a material perspective, there's never been a better time than today. And this is important. This is important. Um, I would, I would add that it is all a consequence of enlightenment thinking. It's all a consequence of the discovery or the rediscovery of, of, of the efficacy of reason, the, the, the bringing in of reason into civilization and replacing mystical revelation as a source of knowledge, replacing superstition and sticking to science and reason and knowledge, real knowledge. And while we in the West, in the United States and Western Europe, are losing that, and we, I still believe, are in decline, the rest of the world is discovering the Enlightenment, at least in some sense. The idea of individualism, the, 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 the fact that the individual is an end in himself, the fact that the purpose of politics is to protect the individual in the individual's life, that is on the rise everywhere in the world except, you know, the West and certain parts of the Middle East. So globally, things are getting better as things in the United States and Europe, if not getting dramatically worse, suddenly heading in the wrong direction. All right. You've been listening to the Ron Brooks Show. We're on the Blaze Radio Network. Talk to you next week. Same time, same place.